Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now when people are looking for a single board computer with more computing power, they often turn to the Rock Pro 64 and I have one here. And today I want to do a review of this board and tell you what you get for your money. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now I've actually had this uh, Rock Pro 64 for about a month now and I never quite got round to finishing the review because uh, I always wanted to try something else on it to experiment with a different part of the feature set. But of course now with the announcement of the Raspberry Pi 4, getting a review out for this becomes kind of a high priority for me. So I'm doing this today and hopefully also this afternoon my Raspberry Pi 4 will arrive. So in a couple of few days time I should have the review of the Raspberry Pi 4 and I'll also be comparing it to this board. But let's look at this board to see what it is. So the key advantage of the Rock Pro 64 is the hardware. In terms of a single board computer, it comes with lots and lots of different features. First of course is the Rock Chip 3399, which is an ARM-based processor, a hexa-core processor, with two Cortex-A72 cores and four Cortex-A53 cores. And then you have the RAM. You can have up to four gigabytes of RAM depending on the model that you buy. So a hexa-core processor with four gigabytes of RAM now brings this into the area of something that can run more as a server or even as a desktop PC. But on top of that, you've also got gigabit wired ethernet, you've got USB 3 support, and most importantly, you've got PCI Express support, PCI 2.1 to be precise, with four lanes. And that allows PCI peripherals to be connected to the board. And talking of PCI peripherals, I also got myself a SATA card and I've got here a 250 megabyte SSD. And I was able to connect all of these over SATA, over PCI to the Rock Pro 64. So while we're talking about the disk, I actually connected it all up, formatted that SSD drive as ext4, set up a Samba share so that the files were available over my home network. And then doing uh, various testings, copying files to and from the uh, Rock Pro 64, I was able to get over 100 megabytes a second, peaking sometimes as high as 110 megabytes a second while copying files. And that's basically as good as I get on anything in my home network. Now that's over gigabit ethernet, and I've also got other servers that manage around about the same speed. So I was pleasantly surprised by the uh, IO performance that you can get over gigabit ethernet using SATA, using the PCI uh, on the Rock Pro 64. So that's definitely a big thumbs up for this board. One option to boot the board is using a micro SD card and it slots very simply here into the board. But there's also the option of booting from eMMC module. So that's also a good uh, feature of the hardware of this board. So if we look at the overall performance of this board using various benchmarks, including my own thread test tool, which you'll find on my GitHub, uh, site including things like Sysbench, I was able to work out that the CPU performance can be anywhere between 2 and 10 times faster than a Raspberry Pi 3. Now as I said earlier when the Raspberry Pi 4 arrives to me, which I hope should be this afternoon, I'll also do comparisons with that. So compared to a Raspberry Pi 3, between 2 and 10 times and the memory speed is about 20% faster when compared to a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus. Now, when I actually run something like a more close to a real world situation, for example, I like running this uh, RISC-V emulator called Angel, which you can run inside the browser and it boots up to Linux inside of the web browser. Now that takes about 44 seconds on a Raspberry Pi 3 uh, Plus, but actually takes about 11 seconds on the Rock Pro 64. So you can see a four times a speed increase there. Now when you compare that, let's say, to a desktop machine, a desktop machine can maybe do that in, let's say, four or five seconds, obviously, depending on the processor and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's not the same as a very modern uh, CPU inside of a desktop, but much, much faster than what you get in a Raspberry Pi 3. So when you talk about the hardware, there is so much to like about this board. You've got a good processor, you've got a good amount of RAM available, you've got gigabit ethernet, you've got USB 3, you've got PCI Express, you've got that eMMC module. There's so much that you could actually really enjoy on this card. However, you need software and drivers 
to run on the board. And that is actually the weakest part of the Rock Pro 64. Now, first of all, when you go to the Rock Pro 64 uh, web page and you look at all the different versions of software available, it's quite impressive. Not only can you get Ubuntu and Debian and Arch and CentOS, and there is even some Ambian uh, builds there. You can also get Android 7, 8.1 and 9. When I first looked, I thought, wow, this is a great list. What great support they have for this site. However, the quality of these different builds varies quite a lot. For example, I just assumed because I was used to the Raspberry Pi that if I kind of went and got the kind of the leading distro, downloaded it, installed it, plugged in that SATA card, plugged in all the, the, uh, the SATA uh, drives, powered it up, that everything would work. But actually I found that when I tried to access the SATA drive, it, the whole thing would just freeze. And then after searching on the internet and looking around a bit, I found that only some of the distros in that big long list actually support that SATA drive. So finally I found one and I could only find one that went on the command line. So there wasn't a version that ran on the desktop. That could have changed, but this is when I was doing it. And then you have to run this one and then I was able to use it to run that SATA connector. So some of the drivers are missing in some of the distributions and that already puts you on a difficult footing because sometimes you might find there's one thing works in one distribution and another thing works in another distribution, but there isn't one that gives you both. And that can be a real pain. For example, I also took my Adafruit uh, kind of Pi OLED mini display and I thought well, I can put this on the GPIO pins and then I found that the kernel I was running didn't have I squared C support in it. And then finally when I did kind of keep trying different variations I was able to kind of get I squared C but then it didn't detect the board. So you're kind of thinking well from an ecosystem point of view this isn't plug and play compatible with the Raspberry Pi and of course the Raspberry Pi has got the majority of all the gadgets out there and if you want to get things working you're going to have to start fiddling with different kernel versions, writing your own drivers, downloading distributions to find out if the things that you want are supported. And that really is the saddest thing for me. It's one thing to have a board and then want to do your own things on it and to experiment as a file server or using the GPIO pins. But when there isn't a cohesive uh, ecosystem, then actually you end up fighting with the system, fighting against the board, fighting against the software to do something you can do on other boards actually very simply. And it's also finally worth mentioning the price. Now it's listed on their website for $80 for the four gigabyte version. And that's important when we come to talk about the Raspberry Pi 4. Now the problem is for that $80, you have to actually get it from China directly. And the country I live in, I have to pay import taxes when something comes from China. There was also the postage costs to pay on top of that. And then also there was how long it took to get from China to my doorstep. So actually just to get the uh, Rock Pro 64 board in my hand, I had to spend over $100. And on top of that, I bought the SATA card and the right cables for it. So that is a significant amount of money for a small board computer like this. So let's recap. I love the hardware, great processor, Gigabit Ethernet, PCI Express, the ability to have that SATA connection on there, loads of other stuff that you can actually uh, connect up to this board, but it's let down by the ecosystem. So even taking a simple gadget like a display that you can stick on the GPIO pins, it didn't work. The software didn't work, the drivers didn't work. Uh, if you want to find something that works with a SATA card, you have to try one distribution, then another distribution. And so you end up wasting time and you end up hunting around just to try to get the thing working that you want. Now, if you can get it working relatively easy, then that's actually a good solution. So if you want it just for a file server and you get the right distribution, it's going to work out of the box. If you want to do more things with it, you're going to end up hunting around, scratching your head, looking in forums and things like that. So hardware good. Ecosystem of software, not quite so good. You have to pay your money and take your choice. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Do hit that bell notification icon so you'll know when I release the Raspberry Pi 4 review. Uh, and that's about it. I'll see you in the next one.